Hi everyone, in this video I would discuss the B cell development. Now B cell development starts in the bone marrow. Bone marrow is the primary lymphoid organ where immune cells develop. In the early stage of B cell development, it takes place in the bone marrow. Then later, when B cells mature a little bit, it moves out to the secondary lymphoid organs such as lymph node and develops there. So the primary place of B cell development is the bone marrow. Inside the bone marrow, there is endosteal niche. Endosteal niche is closer to the uh, bones so where the osteocytes are there. And there is another niche known as vascular niche around the blood vessels. In the endosteal niche, there are certain cells known as stromatal cells. Now these stromatal cells play a crucial role in B cell development. So let's just take a moment to learn more about the stromatal cells. The stromatal cells are actually supportive cells and they are large adherent cells. The Greek word stroma means matters. The stromatal cells work like a substratum which holds the pro B cells in a specific niche and also influence their development by secreting several cytokines which are very important in B cell development. We would talk about these cytokines and the signaling downstream to these cytokines and how they are involved in B cell development. So stay tuned. Now inside the industrial niche there are hematopoietic pluripotent stem cells and hematopoietic pluripotent stem cells can give rise to lymphoid progenitor cells which is not shown here. Ultimately this lymphoid progenitor would give rise to a pre-pro B cell which is a total immature stage of a B cell. At this stage B cell expresses some adhesion molecules. Also this pre-pro B cell expresses a B cell lineage marker B220. Now also at this stage B cell expresses another transcription factor which is known as EBF1 and we would learn about EBF1's function and its role in B cell development. At this point of time the bone marrow stromatal cell expresses adhesion molecules known as VCAM1. On the other hand side, the pre-pro B cell expresses adhesion molecule known as VLA4. This VLA4 and VCAM interaction is very important for B cell development. Now, VLA4 VCAM1 interaction hold the pre-pro B cell near to this bone marrow stromatal cell niche, such that stromatal cell can influence its development. And also this VLA4 and VCAM1 interaction give rise to expression of another adhesion uh, molecule known as C-kit and C-kit has defined role. From the pre pro B cell, after the interaction of VCAM1 and VLA4, it starts expressing C-kit. On the other hand side, stromatal cell expresses stem cell factor or SCF. This SCF and C-kit interaction is important clue for the proliferative signal to B cell. Also, another chemokine known as CXCL12 mediated signaling is very important for pre-pro B cell. Now, at this point of time, two important phenomena happens. One is C-kit and SCF interaction which give rise to a proliferative signal and also at this point the CXCL2 based signaling system give rise to proliferative signal. From this point onwards the heavy chain DJ recombination starts. Now as time progresses the early pro B cell detaches from that specific stromatal cell and goes and binds to other stromatal cells which are IL-7 secreting. Now IL-7 has distinct role 
in early pro B cell development. IL-7 receptor is situated in the early pro B cell and IL-7 binds to IL-7 receptor and this gives rise to specific signaling. At this point of time, VDJ recombination takes place. So the B cell receptor, which is basically membrane bound anti-IgM or anti-IgD, they are, they are actually produced, the heavy chain is produced from this point onwards. So let's just take a look what IL-7 mediated signal do. So IL-7 bind to its specific IL-7 receptor on the uh, early pro B cell stage. Now it binds to the IL-7 receptor which is a tyrosine kinase and which is a tyrosine kinase based receptor. Now along with it Janus kinase is associated. Now Jack gets phosphorylated upon IL-7 binding and it allows phosphorylation of STAT5. STAT5 moves to the nucleus and start transcription of NMIC and CMIC. Also, it start transcribing EBF1 and EBF1 and STAT5 both allow transcription of PAX5. EBF1 is super important for DGH recombination. And also, PAX5 is very important for VDJ recombination. For the heavy chain recombination, PAX5 and EBF1 are super important. So these two transcription factors ensures that the heavy chain recombination takes place properly. Now EBF1, E2A and PAX5, all these transcription factors actually activates many genes which are important for B cell lineage specification and B cell proliferation. Now, once the early pro B cell stage is over, then comes the late pro B cell stage. In the late pro B cell stage, it starts expressing the, a primitive version of a primitive version of BCR, which is known as B cell receptor. Now, at this point of time, you see the heavy chain of the B cell receptor is formed, but the light chain at this point is not properly formed. So at this point, the light chain is known as the surrogate light chain, which comprise of V pre B or lambda five. But from this stage onwards, the light chain recombination would also start. Now it would start expressing CD twenty five and high affinity IL two receptor. Now it now it would become an immature B cell. Now in the immature B cell, in the immature B cell, you can see the uh, light chain is now formed and also another remarkable thing is IL-7 receptor is down regulated. In absence of IL-7 receptor mediated signaling, the adhesion molecules would be also down regulated. So these immature B cells are detached from the bone marrow stromatal cell niche. So now they comes to the vascular niche and they migrate via blood vessels and ultimately reach lymph node, which is a secondary lymphoid organ. Now inside the lymph node, there are specific regions for B cell and T cell development. So lymph node is like an army base camp where they get specific trainings. Now B cell at this point is immature, it's naive, it has not, though it can recognize antigen, but it has not encountered real antigen. But in this germinal center, in the specific B cell zone, it would interact with dendritic cells and other antigen presenting cells to recognize antigen. And it would either become an antibody producing plasma cell or it would become a memory B cell. About B cell affinity maturation and B cell activation, I have separate video. So this is how B cell development progress from the bone marrow and some part of the development happens in the lymph node as well. So if you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, please share and thank you.